All right, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast. I'm your host, Richard. Uh, Tomer has a bit of a cold today, so I'm over. I'm, I'm overseeing hosting duties because this week is Tribal Week. Tribal support mm-hmm. cards. We are going to do a tier list of tribal support cards. Uh, so yeah. So I'm your host, Richard. I run the website. I'm the Codfather, and we have with us Saffron Olive, better known as Seth. Hey, what's up, everyone? We have Phil, Brewer's Kitchen. Hey. <laughs> Very excited this morning. And then we have <laughs> Tomer, yeah. Budget Hello. Commander, Dr. Andre. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> so uh, so if, you're, if, you're, if you want to support the show, uh, you can check out our merch at mtggoldfishmerch.com. Uh, make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform on YouTube. Uh, and yes, yeah, so let's get underway. So we have ranked 35 tribal support cards. If you look at the show notes on the website, uh, they'll be they'll be linked in the YouTube comments and also the description of um, you know Spotify or iTunes. You can see all of our ratings uh, for for this podcast. We introduced a new system, a new and improved system, uh, S S to D. So S. Uh, as you know, it's auto-include in all tribal decks. So we're rating in the context of tribal decks now. Uh, a is good in a large percentage. B is good in a small percentage. C is like average card. And D is you need to have a pretty good reason for playing this card. And the new the new tier, SS, is so good that you play it outside of tribal decks. Super you know, Sam. Secret rendezvous. <laughs> this, is the, this is the secret rendezvous. We have rendezvous ascended. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get some of the fluff out of the way real quick. Okay, we have actually two SS that we've uh, all agreed upon, and that's Toski eh. Bearer of Secrets. <laughs> that's not an SS for me, by the way. That, that, that's the four man creature card, that when you hit okay. someone, you draw a card <laughs> yeah. for each creature that hit them. Uh, it's it's a skeleton, Starting it's our- a bird, it's actually <laughs> nothing, but it's, it's so good you put it in all though. tribal decks. Uh, Path of Ancestry, an actual tribal card. Uh, that we play outside of tribal decks. And Path of Ancestry is an ETB tapped land. Uh, you can tap it to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. One that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares the same type. Uh, scry one. So we play this outside. We play this in all decks. It's just a, it's a five color yeah, tap sure. land. Like if you're playing five it's colors, I think it's worth right? it. It's better, it's better than if you're... <laughs> any ETB tapped duel you can play. If you're like a monocolor yeah. non-tribal deck, I wouldn't run it. Well, right, you got to be like three plus colors usually. Yeah, because yeah. it's if you're like three plus two, easy play, mana fixing, right? Because it doesn't have any requirement. It always taps for color mana. Wait, would you? And it will always scry on your commander. What was huh? a scry every time you cast? Why would you? Well, it has to. Monocolor non tribal, then you're not like scrying that much. If oh, you're monocolor yeah. tribal, maybe. Okay. But yeah, non-tribal, if you're monocolor tribal, tribal like if you're like mono blue wizards, I'd run it, you know, like as long as I'm consistently, <laughs> as long as I'm consistently getting the scry effect, uh, I think it's it's worth. But I'm also a conscious objector to the Super Saiyan rating, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to add on that. Paper. Yeah. All right, uh, quad S. We're going like full <laughs> Japanese like rhythm game here. I, I um, agree that based on our, our rating scheme, Toski is a uh, Super Saiyan. However, I think there are no, better no, no. draw engines in Tribal Tribal the that... S. I, I or not S, travel no, travel, no, no. but under <laughs> under S. All right, we'll, we'll get to some of those. Has, has own objection to this. We'll get to some of those better draw engines. No, we have a mutiny I'm, on no, board. Let me say this: S in Toski of Barrow Secrets is for sus for my <laughs> ranking. It's not a tribal card. Great Henge isn't a tribal card. Sure, tribal is creatures, and it synergizes with Toski. But come on. I got we'll, an honorable we'll, bench we'll, later. We'll fight Tober in a certain category better. otherwise. But I would actually argue that Toski is better than most of your support tribal draw. <laughs> right? Like, <sighs> yeah, maybe there's but one or two. We're talking about tribal That's cards, That's true, Richard. but like <laughs> demonic but what tutor is better missions? than your like wizard cycling tutor, but that doesn't make it a tribal card. Look, I, I'm just, just saying when you build tutor. your deck, you should have just blindly put in like, you know, just because it's S and tribal support, you should put it in, right? It's like, no, there actually might be other cards that just actually straight up do a better job than whatever your tribal synergies require, right? 
Yeah, um, I, run more generic staples, from, everybody. That's from, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's take what away here. Wizards wants us to do. That's what Wizards from, wants us to do. Now. From a deck building perspective, I think Richard is right. If you're building tribal decks, you probably should be playing Toski as your guard yes. draw. If you got a bunch of go wide creatures. It's still weird to think of it as a tribal card, though, for me. Okay, yeah, it's a meme. It, okay, it really eat. shouldn't be a tribal card, right? <laughs> but, you know, it's a skeleton. It has a skeleton. Yeah. It flies. It's a bird. It's, it's, it's a bird. It's a mammal. Are oh, you playing mammal bird. tribal? <laughs> best bird in the format. <laughs> um, okay, Did anybody okay, okay. play Toski in dragons or humans the last weeks? No. I don't I think so. Either. Oh, I didn't. So, so we have integrity. I should have played in humans, So probably. much integrity. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's bad in dragons, but... Yeah, okay. if you're not go wide, but it's not connect. very good, right? They fly. Yeah, it just so happens that most play. tribes are go wide because yeah. you want to play a lot of creatures, and most tribes are not top end like dragons or angels. You know, like there's a couple of tribes that don't go wide, but most of them are kind of lower to the ground, like goblins, merfolk, humans, elves. You yeah, know. birds. All right, so birds. We talked about Path of Ancestry, but there's another land that that has tribal synergies, uh, and that's Cavern of Souls. Okay. Uh, that you might be familiar with if you play 60 card formats, but you basically choose a creature type. Uh, Cavern taps to add any mana uh, when you're casting that creature type. It can't, that creature can't be countered, and they can also add one generic. Now, this one, uh, we're a bit dis- divisive on. Uh, Phil and myself have rated it at B. Seth and Tom are at S. Why would you not play this in every tribal deck? Like, outside of budget. That's the one reason I could see if you're like, I don't want to spend 60 bucks or whatever on it. I get that. That's legit. But if budget is not in our conversation, what's the argument against playing this in literally every single tribal deck? You have spells that are not creatures (laughs) of the type that you're casting. You need mana. You need mana. Right, like, ah. so if you're playing five color humans or something, yes, I think Cavern is like a great card. Uh, but if you're playing like a two or three color deck, I don't think you need the Cavern, and I don't think the uncounterable aspect oh. is actually that important. And I'd rather play lands that can cast my spells and like have utility. Huh. So it's it's okay, but it's not like crazy. I, I wouldn't like just start a deck with Cavern. So there, wow. there's a downside to it that it, it has for colorless if you're not casting the, the chosen creature type, which is a problem. Yep. But in your example, though, it would be the least problem in a one or two color deck because most of your other sources are going to be that one color and you only need one or two. Like in a one color deck, but, you only need one type of color mana. it doesn't perform fixing anymore, right? In a one or two color deck. So but it just the upside performs is, uncountability. That's it, And that's right? such a good utility. It's just passively but, making the blue player at the table unable to counter your spells no your most important spells. spells no not most important most well, important, your most important spells are usually not probably creatures. a great hand or something yeah. yeah what i want my my commander to not be countered for example and that's usually sure. the tribal leader like wow. imagine just, if like imagine if like somebody it's played more and got a counter it's pretty playable yeah yeah wow. it's, it's good. I'm like so far on the other end of both of you guys because if anything, I was wondering if I should have rated it double S because I think there's like legitimate uses of being like, I really need these couple of specific creatures that share a type to resolve in my deck. So I might as well play Cavern of Souls. If anything, for me, it's like super high S bordering on double S for certain wow. decks rather than being a B. Like also, to me, it's a five like- color untapped land. That's great. And I just basically kind of discount the uncounterability <laughs> aspect. Like it's okay, but like Phil said, usually your important cards, okay, your commander is one specific instance, right? So if your deck's built around your commander, then cavern is a very good consideration. But other than but that, it's every usually deck a is spell. built around your commander. <laughs> Yeah. It's 2022 yeah. magic. Everybody has a commander that's yeah, like, you, if we're you talking don't about like eight deal drop commander I mean, that you can't sneak in under a counter spell, right? Like, if your commander is like a three drop, like, no, like you know, who's going to be holding yeah. up counter spells on turn three, right? So, uh, but, ooh, if you gotta, but if you're playing like a tribal deck, you got to have like 30 tribe members or something. So, if you think about the deck, you're probably playing what? Like, 30 tribe members, 20 utility cards, some mana rocks and lands. It's fixing for a big percentage of your deck, and then you're getting on counterability as like a bonus. Like it's really hard for me to see how that's not worth it. I play with Krim. I play with Krim. I don't (laughs) feel the need to run cavern souls, right? You just I play with Krim. That's why I rate it so high. I well, why do you have, you don't have to play to counter around the cavern I spell. Play. You don't have to. Cavern makes it unnecessary. It's also like we see in this list how many 
payoffs for tribals are creatures, and then yeah, we yeah. decide if we want a cavern of swords. It's yeah. a good well, card. Yeah. We recently did like dragon tribal. What was? What were the non-dragon creatures that were a problem? I think every I single haymaker was Souls, like yeah. Mirim entered the battlefield, Scion of the Ur Dragon entered the battlefield, the Ur Dragon entered the battlefield. And even yeah, if it, what if you play skeleton tribal, Tomer? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have other problems, Richard. <laughs> but you're <laughs> playing <laughs> skeleton tribal. And plus, the you best know? card of the ball has cavern's ability built in, <laughs> Toski. <laughs> You don't put cards so the, in your deck because you want them to be countered, yeah. though. Like, even if you're not protecting your most powerful cards, isn't protecting your, whatever, 10th most powerful card and resolving it a good thing, like, compared I, to it being countered? Like, I'm isn't that still a upside? In, in, like, a one to two color deck, like, I would play something that has an ability, like, an actual, like, ability, right? Like, a utility colorless land. And so in three to five color fixer. decks, you put this in because it fixes your, your mana, right? And the oh. uncounterability is just, like, the bonus, right? But... Like, if it was, let's say it was, like, add a single color, uh, like, you know, choose a color, right? And it's not a, a, a yeah. five-color land, but it gave uncounterability. Would you play it? Like, I don't value the uncounterability part of it that much. I'd play it in, like, one or two-color decks, but, I mean, it's legitimate mana fixing in, like, yeah. a five-color deck yeah. or a four-color or three. Like, and it comes to play untapped. I think the, the, the floor of it is so high that it's going to be an untapped colorless land. That's that's the worst-case scenario. But the upside of it is it's a mana fixing land that comes into play untapped, and also it will literally win you the game against certain <laughs> matchups if people are like going <clears throat> counter heavy at the table. Crim. Crim. It, it beats Krim, essentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've settled on a double B, double S, coming out at a nice A. <laughs> Although Seth wants to go double S with it. <laughs> uh, on the border, on the border. <laughs> All right, uh... Next up, we have an interesting card of uh, Reflections of Litjara. Litjara. Um, so it's a five mana blue spell. You choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell, the chosen type, copy that spell. Uh, so that essentially means you get like two creatures or whatever, right? Uh, Phil A, Seth D, Richard C, Tomer C. Oh, so uh, Phil, this Phil and card Seth was, have at it. <laughs> this card was on my list. This card was on my list. And the reason I want to talk about it is. When this was first previewed, I was really hyped for it. And I thought this was going to be a staple level card and it was going to be so good. And then I started jamming it in decks and it was almost always really disappointing. It's five mana. And then we're in 2022. Every other creature wizard's Prince of Legend. So I found out I was just like legend ruling myself (laughs) constantly. So I wasn't actually getting the value out of it. So I'm sure that there's like specific tribes that don't have many legends where this is actually like pretty good. But every single time I tried to run it, I just came away feeling disappointed. And now I've stopped running it altogether in any of my decks because I had so many bad experiences with it because of the legend thing. Yeah, like, maybe it's a. B. It's super <laughs> fun though. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is I fun. It's it cool when it I was really excited like, for it too. I imagine Phil like playing this and then Risen Reef and getting two Risen oh. Reefs and like doing oh. Phil things. So I, I can imagine those scenarios where it's good. I just have never made those scenarios yeah. actually happen in the real world. That's yeah, why Miram is so much better. Like Miram gets around that. It's like first of all, you pay six mana for Miram, and when it duplicates a, a dragon, it gets around the legend rule. So that's that's huge. That's number one. And number two is even when you play six mana for it, it's now a six six flyer on the <laughs> battlefield of Ward Two. So it actually already has an impact on the battlefield immediately uh, before you even start playing dragons. And then yeah, because ninety percent of your creatures are going to be legends, and it's only going to go higher from now. Like every single every other creature is a legend now that they print. So uh, this non legendary copy restriction is becoming more and more difficult. Mm-hmm. Reflections is a card a year before its time because you know if they printed it today, it would probably avoid the legend rule and it would be really good. And it would cost one less mana. And it would be an 8 <laughs> Oh, <eight>. God. <laughs> this, this just gets you killed. Like, it's five mana. Yeah. It doesn't impact the board. And then, like, who knows what's coming off the top, right? Like, anything can be coming down. So it's, like, incredibly scary. So everyone can kill you and we don't know if it's just like a sack of tribe elder coming in or if it's like an agent of treachery or something no. right like so it's it's like putting your combo piece out there yes. tapping out and hoping for the best right so it just gets you killed and it's too expensive so i don't particularly like it yeah. i put it at c it's it's okay like you can make it work like i mean if someone untaps with this and pops off like that's not a shocker oh. right but 
uh, I think everyone's aware that you shouldn't let this linger on too much, <laughs> and then you, you'll die. There's a. Yeah. W- one better version that I like a little bit more, it's Necro Duality, and this one's specifically for zombies. It costs what it's a, also a blue enchantment. It costs one less and it just copies zombie spells. It still doesn't get around the legendary restriction. It's not like a creature, so it's not blocking or doing anything like that for you. However, in Zombie Tribal, I find that there's less uh, legendary zombies that are going to be running. And also, if you are running legendary zombies, there's a lot of like sacrifice matters clauses that even the death trigger of having like a legendary creature uh, die, uh, it can be beneficial in Zombie Tribal. So I like that one quite a bit. I will run that in Zombie Tribal, but Reflection is just tougher, I think, to get value. Yeah. All right. Uh, so there's an entire kindred cycle that Wizards printed that is basically like tribal matters. Uh, we're going to start with the green one. Kindred summons. Seven mana instant uh, in green. Choose a creature type. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control. Put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Uh, so basically, if you have five creatures, you get to peel five creatures off the top uh, into play seven mana <laughs> still uh, okay insane. our ratings uh phil a and yeah. then the rest of us b <laughs> seth richard <laughs> Tober, <laughs> b phil, yeah. phil so, you this so much value right <laughs> yes. i actually i didn't know this card existed until seth repeatedly <laughs> played it in every tribal deck and it's always like end of turn i just Yes. dominate the board out of a sudden especially if you play something like I remember when we played Dragon Week I just mentioned well I play Kindred Summonings and I made all these dragons, dragon tokens and I would have just f- put all the dragons in my deck onto the battlefield at the end of turn mm-hmm. sure 7 mana is a lot but then again we always say 7 mon- mana is like a 4 drop in command or something uh, let's say 5 drop and you still need to play creatures, but the payoff, like the the floor on this one, is just ha huh, through uh, the floor, the, the ceiling, ceiling. Is through yeah. the roof. Yeah, you, you can't have a whiff um, on this, this, right? It's just keep revealing you, until you yeah, reveal yeah. X, so you can't screw it up. It's instant speed, so like you can do it and then untap and then do something. Right, yeah. so it's actually pretty strong. It's just seven mana, but you're in green, so you're good, right? The, yeah. the whiff, the whiff though, is that someone rats your board and you have like a creature or something before you get to cast it. <laughs> well, so there is yeah, like a little bit of a it, yeah. floor versus ceiling thing. Like the ceiling's super like win the game high, but the yeah. floor is kind of like seven mana thing that I can't even cast on some board states. So there is a bit of risk mm. built in, but it is incredibly powerful. I like it the most in. Uh, ramp style decks, any sort of mana dork tribe, elves, anything that can like go wide and ramp a lot. I think that's where it's said it's best, but you can consider in basically any tribal deck. Just know there's going to be some times when the board gets wrath a couple times and it gets stuck in your hand. I think this is a card that I under, under, like, I keep forgetting exists and then I, I, I think I should be running it more because I do think the instant speed is what really makes it stand out. Being able to do yeah. this at the end step before your turn means that you could have a lethal board state. Uh, untap with a lethal board state and immediately get the value out of it. And like, yeah, you can get blown out by a board wipe, but most board wipes are sorcery speed, so the instant speed does get you get around that to an extent. Um, it does have or it does require the setup though. You need to already have a good board state for you to get anything out of it. But also, like seven mana, you're in green, so most green tribes are going to make a lot of mana. And it's also really good with token decks. Like elves are also usually token decks, but like human Selesnia humans, this is a great way of just utilizing all the the tokens you're pooping out of like Torrens or whatever, uh, and then poop out half your deck, and that'll probably be a, a lethal game winning play. So what's the <laughs> least amount of creatures you would get with it? Like otherwise you just don't cast it. But like depends how much it, do you want out of the if you're playing dragons then i think one is sufficient uh, uh, yeah probably <laughs> but if you're playing elves yeah. you might need a, a a lot more so i think it depends on the tribe you're playing and like yeah i think yeah. that's true i want yeah. five I mean, or more usually that's what i'm five looking i'm looking for that's a lot like yeah magical christmas land <laughs> No, it's very achievable though. You've won the game, right? Like, if you have five, like, there's how can you lose the game? Like, you should be winning right there, right? It is, it is a little win more, but don't we all enjoy winning more? Isn't that what Commander is kind of about? Like, not just winning, but winning in the biggest way possible. I think (laughs) this is a more stylish Crater Hoof, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. That, that's the I same think, idea. I, I think I would say, yeah, I think that's a good. It's a it's a more stylish crater hoof. I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, it's also so this super is a fun whole, to resolve. To this is a whole cycle. Uh, the black one is a uh, is a saucy one here. Uh, so kindred <laughs> dominant seven mana sorcery at black uh, in black. Choose a creature type. Destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type. Uh, we have the full spectrum in our rating. <laughs> Phil S. Seth A. Tomer B. Richard C. <laughs> C. So. It is seven mana, and I've become more skeptical of seven mana wraths. On the other hand, it is mostly a one-sided wrath. Like, usually the way the game plays out, unless you get unlucky and your opponent has some of the same creature types as you, it usually is a cheaper Plague Wind, essentially, a lot of the time where you get to keep your stuff and you blow up everything else. I still play it on occasion, but I don't play it as much as I used to. It used to be like an auto-include for me in every tribal deck when it first came out. And now I'm a little bit more selective where it's like, eh, am I ramping enough? Like, oh, you know, what's what actual tribe am I playing? So that's ah, that's why it's kind of bumped down for me where it used to be probably an A and now it's more of like a B. Um, I play it in every yeah. tribal deck that plays black. And I don't really see it as a rough. I don't plan on playing it as early as possible to keep the board clear because I can play all my stuff and then I rough. And since I don't play Cyclonic Rift, this is what I have to fall <laughs> back on because okay. this just <laughs> clears the board. Not that this Integrity. ever happened on Commander Clash, but uh, <laughs> uh, I do play it quite a lot. And I try to put it into every tribal focus deck that plays Bulek. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's seven mana. I don't, I don't think seven mana is too much. Yeah, I, like, but it's, it is a lot. It, it's a finisher that doesn't finish the game, right? Like you set up your board and then you wrath, and you since you didn't pump your creatures or you don't have enough creatures, like you can't kill anyone. And then now everyone's like, well, one person has a giant board, everyone else is wrath. You're arch enemy, and then you die, right? Because someone <laughs> else will just do another wrath. So. If I have a big board, I would not want to cast Kindred Dominance. I'd rather just cast a Crater Hoof or an Overrun or something and just like end the game rather than do this Wrath that doesn't actually end the game. And like, you know, so I, I consider it a C. Like, you know, if you can somehow like to Fairy's Pro in response to a Wrath, that's great because you spent three mana, you didn't use your card, you didn't do anything. But if you have to spend the seven mana, like, I'd rather just Overrun or something, right? Like, I'd rather just finish the game than try to set this up where I'm arch enemy and try to absorb everyone's removal until I finish them with my like dirtily creatures. Although it is a black card. So assuming you're not in like crater hoof colors or overrun colors, what else are you going to use in black? Like black is usually trying to cast big drain spells or something. So I think like in black based tribal, the idea of like wrath your board, one shot someone, get the blackers out of the way. I think there's a little bit more validity there if you're playing mono black because you just don't have those options. We have coat of arms. We have uh, uh, what's yeah, the new background card? There's a background card. Haunted that one. Your team. Yeah. yeah haunted okay. One. There's like a bunch of. Them, but I don't know. Like, we're yeah. really rathing and then hitting people with, like, tutus or something? Like, you need to pump your team and, like, finish them off, right? Well, in fact, kill or something, I forget right? that Richard is always playing really yeah. bad tribes. <laughs> He's assuming yeah. all of his creatures are tutus. Yeah, even so, if yeah. I want a good tribe, if I want like, more, and I two, save six, six demons, what like, that, who's that going to kill, right? Like, <laughs> you still, you, you got to deal 40 <laughs> to each person. Yeah. That's 120 damage. That's a lot of damage, That's, right? Yeah, I think you still, like, Plague Wind, like, uh, yeah. It is pretty good. Do we play Plague Wind? I think it's good. Plague Wind? No. No, but it's a five man. You get a discount. You get a discount. Yeah. It's... I don't know. I'm going to keep playing it. It seems like... Maybe I'm biased because it seems like the perfect tribal card. Just the text box seems like, oh, this is an auto-include. Yeah. Um, So so question for Phil. What do you cut to put in your deck? Are you cutting a Wrath or are you cutting a finisher? (laughs) (laughs) Cutting (laughs) Toski. Like, like what slot does it go into when you put it in your deck? What do you consider it as? I think it's Wrath 2 or 3. My Wraths are probably, if I'm in black, like um, Toxic Deluge, then Decree of Pain, and then this. If I play a... um, tribal deck but it's not really like it is a rough if you're on an empty like if you have no board you can just make mm-hmm. sure everything dies by naming like brush or something but yeah maybe s is a bit much but i do play it in every 
tribal deck, and I probably cut another Wrath, maybe Damnation or something. Since I, if I play a tribal deck, I probably don't want to Wrath on turn four. I don't know. I think it's a good card. I think that's, I'm, I'm in the middle something. of these two. Like, I, I think of it as a board wipe. I like the idea that even if you don't have a board, uh, like if it's a, if it was a finisher, then you need a you need a board state, and then uh, you would rather have a finisher to finish off the table rather than the board wipe. But if you don't have a, a board state and you need to reset the board, then this can still work even though you have no creatures on the battlefield. And the fact that if you do have some creatures on the battlefield and you're not yet ready to win the game, you can still pop this off, save your creatures, and wipe the board. So I like the I like the flexibility of it. It's neither it's neither the best at what it's doing because it's too expensive. It's at seven mana, but the flexibility of being able being able to be useful in multiple situations, I think, makes it a solid B in my eyes. I just think that. As we get more and more, I like asymmetrical board wipes and tribal tribal, but I just think more and more tribes are getting asymmetrical board wipes that are cheaper and more tailored to them. And they're usually way less than seven mana. Like usually five mana is the round place, like Crux of Fate and Olivia's Scorn, I think is a not the kill all non vampires. And, uh, there's a giant one. There's like two that destroy all non giant creatures or deal five damage to non giant creatures. And that's around the five mana mark at seven. You get to use it in any deck. That's great. But it's just a little bit expensive, so I, I still run it, but not always. All right, uh, shifting gears. Let's let's go to everyone's favorite shapeshifter esque cards. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. metallic mimic, mimic and adaptive automaton. Uh, so metallic mimic is a two drop. It's a shapeshifter. So you choose a creature type. Uh, metallic mimic is that chosen creature type. Other creatures you control of that chosen type enter with a plus one plus one counter on it. And it's a 2-1. And then Adaptive Automaton is a 3-mana 2-2. You choose a creature type. Uh, it's that creature type. And then other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. So it's a it's a Lord. Metallic Mimic adds counters. Um, Phil has Metallic Mimic at B. Seth at D. Richard and Tomer at C's. And then Adaptive Automaton, Phil has at C. Seth has at D. And then Richard and Tomer have at C. So Seth really Sorry, doesn't I'm gonna like I'm gonna change I, adaptive. I'm putting the adaptive even lower. It's D. I, I had to I had to bring these up because I think this I think this is a good conversation to have about tribal decks and commander. My opinion on these cards is in general, I don't think that lords that just give plus one plus one are actually all that good in commander. I don't think they do enough. And I think that these are actually some of the weaker lords. You're paying a bit of a tax on them because of the fact that they can be a lord for any tribe. But they're definitely not Lord of Atlantis's or some of the most powerful lords in Magic's history. So my opinion is lords aren't good in general, and these are pretty bad lords. So even if you're playing a a pretty underpowered tribe, I just don't think it's worth it to play Metallic Mimic or Adaptive Automaton. The only exception might be if you're literally just struggling to get enough tribe members. If you're playing some tribe that only has like 10 things and you're just like I need anything that literally says this creature type just to have an actual tribal deck then I guess you get a pass even though they're really bad just because they happen to be that tribe but other than that I think these are just I don't think lords do enough do lords do enough do you guys like lords in your tribal decks in commander they have to have utility they can't just be like you get plus one plus one you have to be like plus one plus one and like island walk or you plus one plus one and do something and these ones don't really do the only reason why i like metallic mimic i put it as a c instead of a d is because it deals with plus one plus one counters so hypothetically if you're in a tribal deck that cares about plus one plus one counters i would rate it a little bit higher but i also want to rate it lower just because why are these cards so expensive metallic mimics eight dollars why I, I don't people understand. There's a lot of people them. who really rate these highly, and like these, they even adaptive automaton. I would say this is like a cent card. It's like four dollars. What? Wait, what what's happening? Four dollars. Okay, what's so happening? Yeah. So mimic. <laughs> I think mimic is a lot better than automaton, right? Like I, I think they're both kind of mediocre, but metallic mimic automaton is still got an on three times two drop. Right? It's a two mana creature of your tribe. Automaton is like a three mana two two. It's like terrible, right? You don't want to be playing that, right? But a two mana. Then make you have to play before your other creatures though, or else it doesn't do anything. Well, no, Automaton no, no. you mean, can play after. You, you just use it to trigger whatever tribal synergies you have, right? As a yeah. two mana, like kind of like a changeling in uh, a scarecrow deck, right? Like it's, it, it's, it's, it's serviceable <laughs> at that, and then it has the bonus of randomly giving plus one plus one counters. But I agree with Seth. Like these incremental lords just get you killed. They do nothing, and then they slowly make you scary. 
And then, like, there's like, oh, we got to wrath the board now, even though we can't do anything. And then you get reward wrath, and you're like, wow, that was useless, right? So, yep. like, Island Walk, I don't think is enough utility. I think you need, like, real utility on your lords, like a, a Tovalar or something, right? <laughs> like, the, the Toski. Yeah. Draw effect, a bunch right? of cards or something, yeah. Like the, I think we're, I, this I podcast is the plus one, plus one, so I don't on get Kiel's favorite cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not my, one of my favorite. I just rated Metallic Mimic at B because... Plus one, plus one counters are real utility in some decks. Mm. Um, yeah, Adaptive Automaton, I would rate D, like I will never play it probably, but it's actually a lot for underrepresented t- 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 tribes. So uh, yeah, you can't really be picky with these ones. So these two get a lighter slight bump just in general. Maybe B is a lot higher than I would play it, but if you play like... The new Tyranny deck, the Warhammer Commander deck, for example, if you care about the counter, that's probably one of your best two drops if if your tribe cares about counters. Like, what more do you want? I have I, uh, an alternative for this card, but these cards, by the way. If you like these cards, that's what Tom Tom and Talk Mimic, and you're looking for like a changeling esque card that will pump up your thing and you're in white. One card I will highly recommend is Mirror Entity. Uh it's you can only be in white. I'm just gonna read it out real quick. Uh, it's two and a white, uh, one, one changeling, and you can pay X until end of turn. Creatures you control gain pace, power, and toughness XX and gain all creature types. So not only is this a great way to like kind of smooth out your tribal support cards, like if you have a bunch of non-tribal creatures on the battlefield, like a couple, you know, you're not always going to be purely every single card has to be that tribe, then those can benefit from that temporarily. And it's very easy to just be like, all right, this is mid to late game. I have a big board say I pay eight mana post post uh declare blocks and now all my creatures are 8a gg and usually like that's how this card kind of plays out like it actually has a massive impact on the board as opposed to other ones which is just one extra meh i like this one a lot more yeah i i like mirror entity too i think that i think that it's pretty good i will say with metallic mimic there are are some combos with the counter i think if i was gonna rate it b for anything it would be for like in my goblin deck i have infinite persist sacrifice combos or something in that context i think it's definitely a b but those are like a very small percentage of decks that are going to be trying to do those things so i don't know if i can give it a b just based on that because they're just they don't show up that often like the rating of B only good in certain decks. That's true, but how far do you go <laughs> yeah. down? Like this is like a one in a million deck. Some reasonable there's number deck, of decks. But yeah, yeah. 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 I think there's an argument for for being a B, like based on like these combos and synergies, right? Yeah, very um, good and persist combo decks. So so to tack on to Tomer's ch- changeling, I, I have a I have a question for you guys. Crib swap. So crib swap, three mana tribal instant spell uh shapeshifter it's changeling so it counts as your tribal uh card exile target creature is controller creates a one one colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling uh you people that play spot removal do we do we play this in our tribal decks I mean, does this replace any kind of spot removal or anything it. so uh, we rated all c's Seth has bumped i, it to I a just b. bumped it i just bumped it because i think if you are playing a tribe that can tutor it up then it's pretty good. There's also the Hakan Knight deck that can cast it repeatedly from the graveyard that's pretty good. So I think there's like specific decks that can take advantage of it. I think the main power is this is a removal spell that my Goblin Matron can get or whatever. Like yeah. that's that or my Kithkin Harbinger can get. That's the power of this card. As a removal spell, yeah. it's not very good. But if you're a tribe that has these tribal tutors, then I think having this one off tutorable removal spell can actually be a big deal. I bumped it to B. I think the main I issue of this it. card is <laughs> I bumped, the main issue of this card is most tribal support cards care about specifically creatures, like tribal creatures, and this one is a tribal spell. But like Seth said, there are some cards, a, a narrow amount of them, that care about any tribal cards, and it doesn't care about the creature type specifically. Hakan being able to repeatedly just crib swap out of the graveyard is like my favorite troll thing to do in my tribal tribal deck. It does become one less with like Ur Dragon, and you can tutor it up with a select number of uh, tribal cards. So if you do have like one or two of those things that kind of make Crip Swap better, then it's good. But by itself, it's like not not good. <laughs> but with, with the support, the right cards that actually care about tribes and not just tribe creatures, it's it's quite good. 
Oh, I'm gonna put it as a D. Ooh, oh <laughs> my <laughs> goodness! We, somehow our arguments made Richard like the card I, like, less. You don't wanna, like, okay, if you <laughs> can tutor, if you removal. can tutor anything from your deck, you're really tutoring this removal spell. Like, what if he needs to remove something though? Yeah, what if you actually you're about to need die. to get something, or else you lose? <laughs> I, I like. Would you just rather just lose? <laughs> if you're playing goblins, you can you can get one of those goblins that like kill creatures or like sack whatever. Like there there are many. <laughs> tribal members that do removal right or you can just try to go over the top of it like imagine you just draw this i'm like do i want this really like do i really yeah. want this card right am i really willing to spend mana and like <laughs> you know we're like oh, okay cost reduction you know tribal synergies it's now two mana like just play a freaking path to exile if you really cared about this right like it's one mana without any tribal synergies right or play I mean, a generous it's... gift right so i actually would not play this you're making the, the it best case is it cycles. Bad. It draw, Like, is there yeah. something that lets you draw when you cast this and plus mana reduce it? Like, it's never it, unplayable if you just draw it. Like, it's an instant speed exile target creature. Like, that's a good effect that you want to have in Commander. Yeah, it costs three instead of one, which does make it uh, unappealing compared to Path. But the fact yeah. that you can bolster it with tribal s- synergies all right, all right, all right. makes I'll it give better. It a yeah, I was just being salty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and there are commanders that are like, whenever you cast a spirit, do this. Whenever you cast a whatever. Yeah. And if it doesn't specify like a spirit creature, which some of the older, a lot of the older versions don't, then this is also like triggering your uh, 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 OB or whatever, you know, what random that like, thing you did? The one that blew up everybody. Debate lands on whether you should play mediocre in, cards to like I achieve some effect. <laughs> yeah, that's why I ranked it. Like it the, in the beginning, I had it ranked at B, but then when I was done with the list, I looked over it again and I thought, well, actually, I just play a generous gift or something. <laughs> it is cute if you can tutor it up, and I always like the Hakan thing is super niche and actually good. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Hakan Otherwise, thing is legit, I, right? But outside yeah. of that, <laughs> outside of Hakan that, it's disgusting. usually like, oh, that's. That's a neat trick. You could have just gotten anything better, but at least <laughs> it's it's like a cool joke. Like, oh, look, I can actually play this or get this effect because it's a tribal <laughs> card. I could have just played a sword to plowshares, of course, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. it's cool. But I think more often than not, you're just going to draw it and cast it for three mana and think, well, that was probably not worth the meme here. <laughs> uh it, the artwork of the token and the card is maybe worth bumping it up uh, a bit, but it's still a C <laughs> yeah. for me. C for Crypt. Tells so, a story. Yeah. I love it. All right. Uh, let's move on to Patriarch's Bidding. Uh, this is a five mana black sorcery. Each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creature types of the type chosen, of a type chosen this way, from their graveyard to the battlefield. And, uh, Rating wise, we have it A A for Phil and Seth, Richard at C, Tomer at S. I am Why shocked at you, Richard. Yeah, I am shocked too. What, <laughs> what do you not like about <laughs> Patriarch's bidding? Why do you guys like it? Like, you have to wait so, for your board to wrath, and then you cast it, uh, and then other people get stuff back as well. Like, I'd rather just either a draw cards like i'm in black i can draw cards i don't need like this card advantage right uh, if you get farewell you're very very sad right so i actually just think it's like a medium card right like people get back their creatures too right like you may get back your little dorks they may get back like whatever bomb they have in there right like it's not a foregone like i win the game right and you got to wait for yourself to get wrath just protect yourself against the wrath to begin with just draw cards proactively with painful truths if you're looking for card advantage. So I don't actually like it it's that much. Five I mean, mana reanimate all the creatures in your graveyard, your tribal deck. You're going to get more value than any of your opponents. And also so, you're in black. So if you're against so another you're, tribal deck. You're not deck. counting just mill decks, right? Like, So if you can self mill <laughs> yourself, this thing is insane, right? Yeah. But like, no, just a normal any deck, tribal right? deck, any tribal any, deck, right? Any yeah. tribal I, deck. Like, yeah. if my me, board gets wiped, medium. I'm severely behind. And this is just like one spell, five mana, I'm back in the game. What about this versus Living Death? Uh, I like Living Death a lot, too. Living Death is very good, but I think in a a tribal deck, I would probably play this. I think Living Death has more of the issue of your opponents getting stuff back a lot of the time. Because in theory, you're naturally going to break the symmetry on this because your opponents probably aren't tribal decks. So they're like getting back a thing or two things, and you're getting back everything. Living Death 
a lot of decks have cards getting in the graveyard. Any of someone casts a wrath, the graveyards are full. So sometimes living death is just uh, more group huggy. <laughs> like it, it is very strong and very good, but it benefits your opponent more, I think. Yeah, this one you're always going to get more value than your opponents, unless they're also tribal. And if you are against another tribal deck, you need to tutor up like your Bajuka Bog first or something and hit them with that before you cast it. But like, I don't know. Five mana, get back like six creatures really? while my opponents get like one. I'm fine I with never, that. I, so I know Krim me. loves this card because I think Krim casts it a lot, but I don't think I've ever seen a Patriarch bidding cast on Clash besides from Krim. And I remember when Krim oh, cast it, it was I'll super medium. It. Because here's yeah. the issue, right? Like, if your opponent's going wide, they're probably tribal, right? And they're probably getting a lot of stuff back. If they're not going wide, they have like some scary bomb, like a Jim Gataxius or something sitting in there, right? And they're getting it back, right? So I actually feel this is not as like, oh, five mana, I win the game. Like I feel it's actually a pretty tricky card to play with. And like, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's A. Like, I can see B, but like S and A. S. Like, S. like well, you got to have I- like graveyard removal for no their graveyards and you fill your graveyard then you just like pop off with this right like yeah what? i'm in black of course i have graveyard hate i'm a responsible hashtag gamer I, I gotta i gotta ask you then something richard so you don't like this in part because it can give your opponent stuff back what do you think about haunting voyage haunting voyage six mana choose a creature type reanimate two creatures of that type but you can foretell it if you foretell it for seven mana you reanimate all creatures of that type does that does that change things? Your opponents aren't getting back at anything at all. You're paying more mana, and you got to foretell it and do that. But you, it only benefits you. Is that card good? Do you play that one? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh, this is interesting because Tomer is at a C on this one, where he was S on the other one. But me and Tomer are at C. Seth is at B. Uh, Phil is at A. But I'd rather just do proactive things. Like if you're after card advantage. Like, just play, like, literally any black card draw spell, right? Like, you're waiting for yourself to get Wrath. You're waiting for seven mana. And then, like, what if your graveyard is not intact when this is about to pop? If you foretell in black, everyone knows what this is, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like No, it's Poison the Cup or something like that. Krim plays this card <laughs> a lot, too. Like, Krim loves these cards. Krim yeah, plays Krim Haunting plays Voyage a lot, these. too. And I don't recall like maybe he's popped off once with it but like it's pretty Krim medium, plays 10 wraths in his tribal decks to be yeah. fair <laughs> so yeah Krim totally needs these to, to overcome his own wraths <laughs> i think you know what I'll, I'll bump it to b i don't think okay, it's okay. quite so a totally c likes but... It more, but not as much as patriarch's bidding no i think patriarch's bidding is five mana the turn you you get you the turn you need to reanimate you reanimate this one you need to foretell it in advance. Usually, like usually, you can foretell it. Like whenever you have to spare mana, sometime earlier in the game, you foretell it. Whatever, but like if you didn't have an opportunity to foretell it, then you have to wait a full turn before you can even cast it. And it's seven mana instead of five. Yeah, it doesn't get any of your opponent's stuff back, but I like Patriarch's bidding. Five mana instant, or not instant, but like the turn you cast it, the turn you want to cast it, you cast it every time. Uh, but yeah, this one's not bad either. I'd still, I'd still consider it. I feel like like with Haunting Voyage, you're getting to the point where it's seven mana plus two to foretell. I, whenever I think about putting it in my deck, I get to the point where I'm like, maybe I should just play Rise of the Dark Realms. Like if I'm spending this (laughs) amount of mana, maybe I should just be reanimating everyone's creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Or Eerie Interlude, you just reanimate the entire, like all your lands too. Eerie Interlude is, or not, Eerie Ultimatum, but that's three colors. So maybe it's not a fair thing but it's the same yeah. mana value it is but, also what about the value six mana so if you do it for six mana you get what two creatures ah, reanimation is just so good in commander that reanimating two for six doesn't impress me when you have reanimates and animate deads yeah. and dance of the deads like it just it's not it's not very efficient like if i want to reanimate stuff in my tribal deck and not like protect from a wrath i think i just play reanimate or something the flexibility <laughs> is nice it's nice to have but yeah it's not a good rate how, how much mana is Rise of the Dark Realms? <laughs> nine. 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 So it's nine. nine all at once. So it is two mana more. I think I might as well just but play you can also cast I think I agree with you. Want I think you just, like, yeah. if, you're, if your graveyard's life, well, here, I'll take your graveyard, right? Or, yeah. you know, you Get have... You have Kithkin in here? Like, whatever. I'll just take your Jinka Taxi. I'll over take your there, good right? creatures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's how you make bad tribes work, by stealing your opponent's good creatures. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like Patriarch. It's five mana. Like, the difference between the mana values is very yeah. high. Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of five mana spells, Vanquisher's Banner. Um, five mana oh, artifact. Right. Choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. When you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw... 
a card. Uh, mm-hmm. Phil and Seth have A, Richard at B, Tomer at C. Why do you guys like this card? It draws cards. Why do you but not it's like it? Five mana for we already talked smack about the the anthems <laughs> that were two and three, how awful they were. Like we were unanimous. We were, we were cards, fairly unanimous though. on that. This yeah. one is wow. You got plus one plus one on all your creatures. Great job for five mana instead of three. <laughs> what what then, else do you do? And then you get to draw cards one at a time. Yes. It's like it's just like mm-hmm. a bad, like a horrible beast whisperer. Like one a thing... horrible beast whisperer. <laughs> One thing Richard has taught us over the years of Commander Clash is if you're going to try to win with a janky bad tribe, you need a lot of tribe members. That's the way for, for those decks to win. You make up for the fact that you're playing skeletons by drawing a lot of them, and I think in those janky tribes, this is just like one of the best ways to do it. It's bad Kindred Discovery, but not every deck can be blue. It's the next best thing to Kindred Discovery. In Kindred Discovery, no we, all rated, we all, <laughs> all rated as an S, and this is like a, a decent percentage of that, okay. and it's colorless. Yeah, it's a good. I have a it's question. A solid How can you rate C? this an A? But reflections, a D. Reflections just literally like draws you a card and puts it on the battlefield. Right? You make a copy of whatever you're spelling. You, you cast no, the, the legend. The word draw the legend, a card. Legend. The problem. Legend. The problem okay, is okay. legend ruling yourself. That's why I rank your reflections so low. But, okay, is so that really I would a thing with the legends like. It isn't like yeah, a lot of humans are legends nowadays. But yeah. I think like humans, Although, drag, actually, like dragons, all the popular uh, tribes, all the good cards are legends because they yeah, yeah all the right. iconic creature types. Yeah, ah, scratch that. Angels, all legends, angels are right. all legends as well. Yeah, I would rate this card higher if this wasn't 2022. I just feel like there's so many better options these days. Like if you wanted to draw cards. You have Toski. You have Kindred Discovery. Uh, there's two other ones that I, I value much more highly than this. Distant Melody, which just draws cards equal to the number of, of tribal members you have for four instead of pink five and do nothing. And then there's a uh, same thing was a uh, was it the uh, the new one, the black one. Uh, it's like three mana draw cards uh, equal to the number of tribal serpent. Yeah, pack pack the serpent. The serpent. And I these think. just do it at such a more mana efficient rate. This does. Five mana, do nothing, give your creatures plus one plus one, ooh la la, we already trash talked that to Oblivion, <laughs> and then you have to cast more creatures for it to even draw you a single card, and it doesn't even, like, it, it, like, it keeps you with some amount of gas, but it doesn't really put you up ahead, it doesn't, like, refill your hand, it just keeps a steady flow of extra cards hey, for you. Hey, 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 but... We all love Great Henge. Great Henge, you draw a card, it gives <laughs> your creature plus two one mana, plus one. Two mana. Mana. It's a mana less. rock and it gains you life. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's we can't. Two mana. If we're, I don't think we can poo poo like drawing a card every creature you play. Like, yeah, no. that's like saying Great Henge doesn't refill your hand and it's a bad and card. I, right? I still like Beast so Whisperer more, but this is five mana. It's just a random artifact that sits on the battlefield. So I, I 100% know. agree with Tomer. This is boomer magic. So I've, I've played so many Vanquishers Banner, you wouldn't believe, right? Like, these are the dark days of Mono White, where you play Vanquishers Banner, and you start slamming five drop Kithkin to draw, like, one card a turn, right? Like, this is mind's eye level. Like, there's such efficient draw nowadays that you don't need this. And, like, you know, if you're in a color that can't draw cards, like, maybe red... Like, you know, this is actually not that bad, right? I, it's still serviceable, but it is really, really mm. slow. Like, there's so many, like, three mana draw threes, three mana draw four, five, six in tribal decks that you don't need this five mana draw, like, one card a turn, pump your team, like, be super slow, right? So I actually think it's just okay. Like, if you're desperate, you know, it's good. Like, it, it's, it won't be terrible in your deck, but it's, like, super slow, and there's more efficient draw. I'll, I'll bump it. it down to a B. I think that it does ring true to me that we've gotten better options. And this is a card that I think I I liked more when it first came out a few years ago. But when you say, when you give that big list of all the other ways to draw cards in your tribal deck, I still like Vanquisher's Banner, but maybe it doesn't deserve an A. I still think if you play it and then... Sure, you get a bit of the reflections problem that people think, oh, they're going to go off now. But you're going to probably go off. Like, I played in Elves, and then I draw 10 cards a turn. No, 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 no. I like like Elves, too. It's, yeah, I'm not playing in Elves to draw cards. 
You never have too much card draw. How, I want to draw like enough. five yes, when sir. I cast a single land of war, and I need all yeah. the card draw actually, possible for that. I actually agree with Richard <laughs> nowadays with the there is such thing as too much card draw because like I play my, my most played deck these days is actually my Perforous Dragon Tribal deck, which does not draw cards. It just kind of sits there and watches people dirt all around until I just set up a lethal attack and then I just kill them because they're just too busy tapping out and drawing cards. <laughs> so I do, I do think there is a limit to card draw. I'm just like, yes, continue to dirtle. Tap out. Mm, delicious. Free wins. Uh, no board state. Very interesting. Um, but All right. so we, I, I wanted to have a comparison here. Pact of the Serpent. It's a three mana sorcery. One double black sorcery. Choose a creature type. Target player draws X cards and loses X lives where X is the number of creatures they control of the chosen type would you say this card would you say just like uh like three mana draw like x would you say this is like how would you rate this compared to like vanquisher's banner it's like very different types of draw but like would I you say you worse. want packed higher <gasps> would rate packed higher than that i have them rated we, the same we, we have all b's point. so packed we're actually pretty settled there's it's actually isn't there yeah. a blue one too distant so melody distant melody, this one melody is, is four, four you don't mana. lose life but you don't lose the life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I have them all rated the same. I think the problem with Distant Melody and Pact is you do need to have a big board. And if you're trying to play tribal decks, your opponents are probably going to be trying to keep you from having a big board because that's how tribal decks win. So there's going to be times when it's not going to really do anything. I like that your board can get swept and you still have your Vanquisher's banner and then you cast a card and you refill and you get going again. So I think for me that makes them about the same. Hmm. Well, it's not even Fair close. Enough. Pact is like <laughs> so good. It might be. I just a. want to have three creatures, Pact, and Pact then just I just loses life. So that's the problem with Pact, right? Oh. Uh, but there's other three mana draw threes, like Secret Rendezvous, <laughs> right? Like there, there's like non tribal <laughs> no. ones that you can avoid this. <laughs> you, were but, like, the... you lost me, Richard. I was on board <laughs> <laughs> for you for so <laughs> long. The, the, best, the best spread is this, right? You have like unconditional card draw. So it's like Secret Rendezvous, Harmonize, like those type of effects. And then you have some of these <laughs> conditional ones in case, you know, if you get Wrath, you can still draw cards. But if you have a big board, you just win, right? Like you have five creatures, you draw five cards for three, like unbeatable. Much better than, yeah. like, oh, I'll just play Vanquisher's Banner. And then, like, they're just, like, uh, undo inversion. You're, like, so sad, right? Like, <laughs> so I'd rather... It takes a while to get the value. I, like, I'm much prefer is just four like... mana draw, like, eight or something. Like, there's so much card draw that five mana draw so slowly. Uh, and just think about, like, all your real card draw in your, like, actual colors, right? Like, your, your non-tribal card draw. Like, this is really for mono white in 20... 20- 12 and you were super desperate <laughs> right like i don't know there's also times there's also times where you like you have not a lot of cards in hand and you cast a one creature spell in your hand and you draw like a land and then you're like well i guess i'm not using big pursuit like you're just waiting <laughs> to find your next Thing, and they're like, gee gosh, you're if I commander. drew more than one but, card off this Vanquisher's banner, I'd probably be out of this mess. Uh, is, isn't that the commander. same, though? The same isn't that the, the same, though, though, as having, like, yeah, the pact in hand and your board got wrath and you got no yeah. creatures and you're like, oh, I can't draw anything. Like, I feel like that ends up packs. equaling out, yeah. <laughs> I think the payoff is much higher, though, for pack. Like, you, you have three creatures on the battlefield and I packed and I draw three for three. That's fine. If I have this, more than three, I'm, like, super happy. The ceilings, the ceiling is higher, I would say for sure. Yeah. But in burst draw is usually better than car, uh, slow card draw, like slow repeatable card draw. So, I uh, maybe it's a little bit better. A little yeah. bit better. Okay. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the next. <laughs> I don't know Another about five mana right do nothing, or is it? Uh, Coat of Arms, my favorite card of all time. Uh, Five mana artifacts. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type. Uh, our ratings are... Oh, hold on. Yep. <laughs> Phil B, Seth A, Richard S, Tomer S. Wow, Phil doesn't like coat of arms. I usually fires back pretty dramatically. <laughs> okay, if, you're, if it's tribal week, yeah, this is going to be sad <laughs> <laughs> Coat of 
of Arms is a card that I used to like less because I played it pretty poorly. It's one of those cards where when I first started playing Commander, I would just like run out my coat of arms and my things would get like plus two, plus two. And then everyone would kill me or my opponents would have their creatures get buffed and kill me with their creatures. But then eventually I realized that if you just hold on to this and wait till you build a big board and play it like a crater hoof almost where you play it and just like smash everyone to death, then it's like really, really good. So I think it's actually very strong and you should play it in most tribal decks. Although, again, it's one of those cards that you really want to go wide tribal decks. I wouldn't play this in like dragons or angels where like, I'm going to play one big eight drop each turn or something. Then it's it's not very exciting. But if you're going wide with small creatures of a tribe, then it's a good finisher. Just don't run it out early. That is uh, usually a really, really bad thing to do. Yeah, that's why I have it at B. So... Maybe I'm a bit biased because every time we saw it in, like, we didn't see it as a finisher yet, I think. And the last time we saw it, somebody pumped my bears up mm. to insanely huge threats. Or you get, like, a couple of birds from some spell and suddenly oh, they're yeah. all 5-5 five, five because somebody else played a Code of Arms. Sure, if you play it like a Crater Hoof, um, then it's good, but it doesn't get trampled or something. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. The backfire potential is crazy. Mm. You could probably convince me that it's an A just because of the sheer power of it but it seems hella risky and it's a mm. nightmare to track in paper Yeah, uh, and you're probably yeah, gonna a lot of, a lot forget of about it at some I point I lowered it to an A I, I actually agree because like so it is I think of it as a, a colorless crater hoof where you play it only if you know that you're gonna kill somebody with it the only problem is that you really need to kill basically everybody at the table with it, or else that coat of arms is going to stick around on the battlefield and your opponents are going to get use out of it. Unlike a Crater Hoof, where if you don't kill everybody with it, then it's not like your opponents now have the benefit of your Crater Hoof on the battlefield helping them. So, and also it is only for go wide. Like if you're Angel Tribal, or Dragon Tribal, non Mirror Dragon Tribal, I guess, uh, then uh, it's not as appealing. Um, but I think it's really good. I think it's just like you just you have to play it as Seth said properly. You have to play it when you want to swing for lethal, and then it's fantastic. So I think it's a good A. If you need a poster child for my Commander Clash career, <laughs> it's coat of arms. It is single handed really propped is. like a coat of arms and a Toski can prop up any tribal deck, <laughs> like any tribal deck, right? Well, like it is such an insanely tongue, strong <laughs> finisher. <laughs> Like, so there there are other things, like, say, shared animosity. That just pumps power, right? Yeah. Uh, this it's actually pumps creatures. toughness. So you can actually attack through if, for whatever reason, your creatures don't have evasion, right? If your creatures have evasion, this is just free infinite damage. Um, yes, if someone else is playing a tribal deck, you got to be tricky with it. Uh, but you can usually play around. Like, you know they're playing tribal decks. You can wait for them to tap out. You cut of arms, you kill them, right? If there's multiple think, tribal players, yeah. then yes, this is terrible. You loot it away, right? But <laughs> the upside is so much, and it's colorless, so you can play it with any tribe, and it it gives all the terrible tribes a fighting chance, right? Like, <laughs> all your two-mana one-ones and five-mana two-twos or whatever, like, it doesn't matter because they're, now they're five-mana ten-tens, and that's pretty respectable, right? So... I think Code of Arms is like one of the best cards. And so, if you're a travel player, you should definitely have it in your toolkit. And you should look to see if your tribe has better pump spells. But like nine times out of ten, like Code of Arms is better than whatever pumping your, your tribe is attempting mm. to do. So I wouldn't say like if we ranked Patriarchs bidding a bit of in this context as well of saying, well, if the opponent plays tribal with Code of Arms, it's not like if the opponent plays tribal. I think it's more dangerous with if the opponent creates tokens because yeah. all these tokens are going to have the same creature type just by default. And that is probably way more common than... Uh, no, I mean, tribal decks are already common, but it often happens that like, oh, I create like four human tokens yep. just incidentally. And oh my, they are going to get huge just on accident. So... Not really sure. It's if also you want political to tool, as well, right? Ooh. So like you oh, could yeah, team up true. with that other yeah. person as well to like basically with haste kill someone. But yeah, like I think this, it's happened many times. Like Krim had a bitter blossom or something that even though he wasn't playing fairies, and yeah, that's totally what I mean. hosed yeah, yeah, my coat of arms or someone made like two birds or something with their commander, even though it's not a bird deck. And like oh my goodness, yeah. like, like <laughs> this coat of arms is out of control, right? So yeah, it, it, it has potential to backfire, right? 
But there's really Maybe nothing else that does it, right? A, just because it's so uniquely powerful. But I, 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 I mean, crater hoof. You will die. <laughs> crater hoof is like a, yeah. a crater hoof, right? But it gives trample. I, if you're if you're in green, like if you're in green, you could overrun or something. But as far as just like being colorless and going in any tribal deck, yeah. there's nothing else that can really just finish the game the way Coat of Arms does. I think other colors have other overrun effects. Like green, obviously, has the Crater Huff. I think mirror entities can fit that role in white because you can just dump like six mana and you have just a bunch of six sixes all to get the job done. And I do like uh, shared animosity a lot. I'm just going to shout it out real quick. Uh, because it is tangentially related. It's a three mana red enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn for each other attacking creature that shares a, a creature type with it. So it essentially does the same thing for, as Coder Tons, but it doesn't pump the toughness. But I do like the fact that it can't backfire on you. <laughs> it, your, your creatures will die. Like you're not pumping their toughness, so they will trade against blocks, which kind of sucks. But I mean, if you are swinging for lethal, then it's a, a decent trade and then you don't have to worry as much about your opponents immediately killing you whoever survived at least animosity is very mana. b-ish for me like uh, if i'm playing goblins or something that's going super wide i like it but it's not something i just jam in every in every tribal deck really okay. i think you really got to be going wide to take advantage of it without it puffing uh pumping the toughness that's fair because it also doesn't play any defense yeah yeah it also doesn't help your like power card draw like like there's other benefits that yeah. have just big power uh without attacking oh, like yeah. you, like your card draw or something like that you're right hinge, yes it, it, but it's also three mana it's like budget it's tri- arms, the best right? tribal so support can... card great henge <laughs> and if you have like flyers or whatever like <laughs> it's okay right so there, there are uses for it right and it's just you know what a second coat of arms is good enough for me i, I like it too right <laughs> Phil doesn't like it. Okay. He gave it a C. He doesn't draw cards. Yeah, it says attacking. There's no value. I, it kind of stopped <laughs> reading after that. <laughs> but you gave Coat of Arms an A. Oh, yeah, I, 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 bumped, I bumped Shared Animosity up to a B while you were talking about it, but then you mentioned that it doesn't synergize with things that count power and stuff, and it's not good in defense, and now it's back on C. I'm never going to play it, probably. You the Unless I play Goblins, I guess. And then you have power. That's just a while. The but then race. my creatures die, and they usually produce mana value if they live. I so, don't know. I probably won't play it. <laughs> so next up, we have another poster child of uh, of tribal decks, Mutavolt. It's a land. It oh. taps to add uh, colorless mana. Pay one. Mutavolt becomes a 2-2 creature with all creature types until the end of turn. It's still a land. Uh, B... For Phil, Seth, and Tomer, C for Richard. Do we like Mutavolt? Is it worth playing in our decks? Uh, it's it's <laughs> it depends on the deck. I think I gotta be low on colors. Like one or two color tribal decks, especially monocolor tribal decks. It is an extra tribe member. It's okay. It's like maybe it could even be a C. It's like kinda kinda on the fringe of B to C for me. I think it's sneaky good. But it's like it's, it's it's not it's a little bit in, it's a little bit clunky. You have to you're basically committing two mana. Or well, you commit one mana to turn it into a creature, and then if you want to attack with it, you're essentially spending two mana because you're tapping it to attack, not tapping it for mana. So you're down two mana to just attack with it. But like I run it in five color tribal tribal. I like it because it's two Ooh. mana. I get another Ur Dragon trigger, for example. So I draw another card. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It's nice. It's always, it's always, it's whenever I see it, I'm always happy it's there. It is a little bit clunky because it's colorless, but I like it. I, I like it the best in actually party decks. I don't know if those actually oh. count as tribal <laughs> decks, but if you're actually trying to assemble multiple creature types in your tribal deck for some reason, then, then it's very good. Yeah, I mean it, it triggers like or a dragon. It triggers Toski, but like, would I rather just play a Field of the Dead? Or something over it, like if I'm Richard, using my land slot. Tribal, tribal <laughs> cards, Richard. Oh, we tribal should list this here. You know what? Field of the Dead is actually a double S tribal support card no. because you can pivot your tribe at Look any at moment. Look at our title, Richard. 
you should be playing Field of the Dead because you can pivot, right? Like, you know, you, yeah, you play it and you're like, I'm a Kithkin deck, but Field of the Dead coat of arms still kills everyone. And I'm a zombie oh child. But do you, do you Let's actually come away all these cards and replace them with Toskies and Field of the Dead? How about you, that? Do you come away from winning with your Kithkin deck with a bunch of zombies and coat of arms feeling good about yourself? That's a real but what, question. What if you use the zombies night, to drag the game so yeah. long that your eventual Vanquisher's banner draws enough cards that you can actually with the game with Kith Kid. <laughs> you you should you should just play Field of the Dead because it's busted, but it is not okay, a okay, okay, I can not, maybe not Field of the Dead, but is but... there a utility land better than Butavolt that we should be playing? Tribal or non-tribal? Like that that's what it's taking, right? It's taking a utility land slot, it's colorless. Like, should we put Mutavolt and I guess Faceless Haven? Right? So, like, so those, those cards. No, nah, or... Faceless Haven and doo doo. So, so I mean, things, you have to be you gotta consider color. like yeah. Reliquary Tower. Yep. Rogue's Ooh. Passage, hmm. uh, Ancient Tomb, maybe Urza no. Saga, like War Room. There is competition there. I don't know if any of those things, like in most decks, just cleanly beat out Mutavolt. Though probably Reliquary Tower does, but I I would run most M- Mutavolt over most of those cards in a Tribal deck. Not, not that, tribal, tribal. Another, Let's say your commander doesn't body. directly synergize with Mutavolt. Yeah. Because <laughs> obviously, then you're not you a tribal deck. What are you running? What non tribal commander are you just running? just pumps and Mutavolt's a 3 3. Like, you know, like, is, is it worth running, right? But it's just a, like sometimes you just need a body and it's it's nice. I mean, I think if you're monocolored, it's just worth it. Like, <laughs> you have enough room and enough yeah. slots that you might as well. Yeah. Two colors is where I start to be like, eh, maybe there's something better. And then three plus colors is where I'm like, I better be tribal tribal or something for okay, me to so, want this. So like, War Room or Mutavolt? Uh, in a tribal deck? Mutavolt. In a tribal deck. Monocolor tribal room. deck. War Room or Mutavolt? I mean, I think you can play both in monocolored, but in if tribal. I had to choose one, yeah. War Room, easy, not even close. Yeah, probably. Oh. Ooh, I'm sorry. I don't want to spend five <laughs> mana Tumblr? or four mana to draw a card. That's not where... <laughs> No, Tom, we're so aggressive today. Okay, what, a, what about Arch of Alaska? I, I have a flu. <laughs> Arch of Alaska, no. You need the no, okay, What about what about I the thing that it. copies the mirror pool? Oh, oh, the problem no. with that is you can sack it to make a copy, and that's like tribal synergies. That it, but you need winning mana colorless for this. mana is the problem. Yeah, if it, if you can oh, use it with your normal mana, it'd be good. But that's the use it with mute of what. Right? Mm, it's, play them all. it's a yeah. combo. <laughs> Mutavolt turns on, yeah. <laughs> Your other colorless lands. Reliquary Tower, Mutavolt. Seth's already declared Reliquary Tower. That's a Tower. rough one. Yeah, well, no. If Seth is willing to skip his turn activating War Room, then obviously he needs I mean, Reliquary if, Tower. If we're going we're gonna to call, call Toski an SS tier tribal card, you got to have the Reliquary Tower so you That's don't true. just discard That's all those true. cards again. Uh, <laughs> conscientious, uh, what's a conscientious uh, defiance of the SS, the Super Saiyan? <laughs> ranking here i don't like toski in our tribal tribe our tribal uh, uh ranking scheme here where's but the great henge richard I, would you put double s for great henge too yes I, I mean i think it's a real important thing right just because you have tribal synergies and you can turn them on it doesn't make the card better than the really good magic cards right and you you may I, have a qualm with like you know it's not on flavor or something but like you need to actually recognize this right like sometimes Secret Rendezvous is just better than whatever the heck tribal card draw you're trying to pull off. Oh, right? uh, you lost me again. I was not <laughs> in my favorite <laughs> like, like, you know, like, <laughs> like, like an hour like revelation is rendezvous. much better than whatever tribal wrath you're trying to like <laughs> it, pull off here, right? So, what? you know, you gotta, you gotta actually weigh the pros and cons of it, right? Just because you can turn on the synergy doesn't make the card actually better than its raw power counterpart, right? Yeah, let's just not build tribal You're... decks. Let's just play all the generic good stuff decks. That's but fine. Richard, it's well, Richard is like, oh, Richard, I totally agree with Richard here, though. Like, I don't agree Toski is a tribal card, but I think it's actually a very important thing to do to actually bring up and have out there because I do think people think about it in the wrong way. And I think we talked about Kindred Dominance, the seven mana tribal wrath where you choose a creature type, blow up everything else. That one of the reasons I don't play that as much anymore is you have like Toxic Deluge. And I think if you're thinking, oh, I'm a tribal deck, so I'm going to play this seven mana thing over the three mana thing that's actually good, you're going to make your decks a lot worse doing that. So I think there is like people do get too trapped into the idea that I got to play everything that's a tribal thing and leave out all the good cards. And that's why Richard wins with horrible tribal decks because he's <laughs> playing Toskies and Great Henges and like the actual good cards. And that's how we lose to birds and, and skeletons and it, it, all that like, stuff so, all the so, time. So Great Henges have a type, so you don't find it egregious, right? 
right? But Tosca is a type, so you're like, oh, that's disgusting, right? No, yeah, because like, it's when you're saying I'm bird tribal and you're winning with birds and you have a Tosca on the battlefield. That's what's egregious about it. <laughs> but, like, you cast like, a harmonize. Bird is, uh, you're like, yeah, I'm drawing like, three, right? Like, you know, uh, like, you need your support cards, right? To play more of your terrible yes. tribe, right? <laughs> I, I I agree that it is important to, to realize that some cards are going to be less powerful despite the synergy or the fact that they say something that's on your flavor. However, I, it's also important to just realize what you're trying to build towards, right? If you're trying to build a flavorful deck, then it's not really useful to say, uh, here's a bunch of generic staples that are better than any flavor cards and not mention the flavor cards. But it's also important, like it depends on what you're trying to do, right? Like if you're trying to build, uh, you're trying to make your deck more powerful, then saying like here these generic staples are more powerful this is this is useful to you if you want to power up your deck but then it's also important to point out flavor flavor cards because if you're trying to build a flavorful deck then you're going to be prioritizing that over generic there, staples there's i think there's a there's a give and take there i mean yes. like one thing i learned researching this is that a lot of sliver players play pillar of origins which is a two mana mana rock that comes into play tapped and only makes mana to cast uh, creature spells of the type that you choose when it comes into play. Why would you ever play that Deans when you have around. so many better two mana rocks? Like that's just going way too far. You're like, oh, I get to say sliver on my card, and and you're playing just like an absolutely horrible card. So I think that people can go too far that direction as well, and like just power down their deck too much. Uh, now that you say it, though, I think we forgot about. Uh the courtyard and what is the other land where you choose a creature it's like secluded yeah, courtyard the one from kamigawa yeah. no not secluded we should courtyard. unclaim territory other, it is yeah. unclaimed territory oh, and secluded courtyard yeah. yeah yeah these are pretty good though so so i think yeah i'll read out secluded courtyard and, and it's uh, a land from kamigawa it says <laughs> when it enters the battlefield choose a creature type you can tap it to add one of colors or you can tap it to add one of uh of any color spend it only on the creature spell that you chose so it kind of fits in every... It's kind of like Path of Ancestry, except you have to choose a creature type, uh, enter the battlefield untapped, and will only tap for colored mana if you're spending it all... It, or, you know what? It's a Cavern it's, of Souls. It's, it's a Cavern of Souls. It's a Cavern of Souls. It's a Cavern of Souls without the counter ability. Uh, I don't know. That's like a B for me. That's yeah, mana a fixing. It's like Cavern. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you should definitely <laughs> keep them in mind. Wait, what was the other you one you Cavern said? the same as that? No, no, no. Yeah, what? Cavern and get my... the Uncommon that <laughs> does nothing what? the same. <laughs> when oh, are you relying on no. Like, if your opponent has no counter spells, the cards are effectively the same. If your opponent Who has counter you? spells like, but doesn't counter anything you play, the cards are effectively the same, right? <laughs> what? But, but sooner or later, you're going to play against someone with counter spells. And if you have yeah, concealed but cards, you, you, have you to never play lost a game because like, you, you, you do, cast though, right? a creature and it gets countered? Like, is, has that never happened to you where you're like, gee, I wish Not if only my thing didn't get countered, I'd win. No, and never. Let's say you put Cavern of Souls in your deck, but you don't draw it. So what? You got to play the whole game playing around <laughs> counter spells anyway, right? Right? Like it's especially Fair when you enough. add budget sure. to this. Like I, I think people I'm, overrate how much accountability matters. Crazy. I'm just saying they're literally the same card, except yeah. one does more. So how yeah, yeah, can you yeah, rate yeah. those two things as it's a B yeah. plus B, B plus and then B you do not respect <laughs> counter magic at all. <laughs> Uh, I hope you all get countered a lot for the next yeah. few commander so games I hope you played. I hope you play mono green <laughs> against Krim. <laughs> Pick more I mean, mono green and summon means... commanders against, against Krim. I want to see what yeah, happens. If, if that means uh, my non-creature spells resolve, because they, these are way more important usually. Yeah. You'd play your creatures to get a critical mass of your tribe, but then you pay a payoff. And if that gets countered, these okay, okay, okay. Of Souls. So Phil, my question about okay, not okay. getting your because we're all on tribal support cards. Cavern of Souls <laughs> or Basiju. <laughs> what card do you put in your deck if you're like scared about counter spells? Because I feel Basiju has more value. Because I agree with Phil that your haymakers are actually non-creature spells. So you you just play the Basiju to get those in. But what do you guys think in a tribal deck? Mm. Wait, are we talking about... Mm-hmm. Really? Are we comparing these for tribal decks? But yeah. It's not even a question. Poseidon would be like a C? Well, not I even. Might it would be like what a, if you want to resolve the tribal discovery or something, right? You need a Poseidon yeah, to force it. So Poseidon enters the battle of tap. It only what? taps for colorless, <laughs> and you have to pay two life every single time you use it for mana. Like, it is... Yeah, that's a little steep. Oh, you only play Poseidon if you need a spell to resolve. So Poseidon can force your kindred dominance through. 
Or why but, like, don't you just you, play around the counter spells? Is your deck built around dominance? <laughs> like, if we're gonna... I, I don't know. Hmm. It's a legit question, guys. <laughs> so it seems no. like you guys are so perplexed hey. that you think Cavern 100%, right? I run oh, into Shiro even. because my win condition is Torment of Hellfire. So I need Torment of Hellfire to resolve. So I will, if I see somebody blue at the table, I will tutor yeah. up a Sage you and then go for the Torment. So, so that's because my deck Dekar's is built around to that. resolve, Or you need Kindred <laughs> Dominance to resolve. I'm, I'm a creature I mean, deck. I want my creatures to resolve. If the goal I mean, of your resolve. elf yeah, deck yeah. is to resolve Genesis Wave or something, then sure, toss it in there. Like, if that's your plan, or you're trying to make a bunch of mana in your tribal deck and torment, that's fine. But I would not I would not just jam besage you in a random tribal <laughs> deck because it's like, oh, I'm going to resolve some stuff with it. I, I wouldn't even count it as a land a in, like, a three-color or five-color <laughs> deck. It's literally a card I have to look for to tutor up if I'm in a counterspell heavy, like, a, a counter deck or a counter spell table. You know, the conversation would be different if it fixed your mana and came into play untapped and didn't cost you life. Then maybe yeah, didn't shock you every single time like you tapped it for of mana. Souls, maybe, maybe I'd feel differently about it. How did we get but... back on Cavernous Souls again? We're going in circles here. Uh, <laughs> we were comparing uh, Cavernous uh, Souls to the Sage. I'm sorry. Here. No, no, <laughs> we, we were on unclaimed territory. The the, the... Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a nice way okay. to, to uh, bookend. Uh, mm. Question for you guys: Riptide Replicator. Okay. No, 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 no. What's that? <laughs> X4 artifact. No. As it comes into play, choose a creature type. Uh, it comes into play with X charge counters on it. Pay for tap, add an XX creature token of the chosen color and type, uh, where X is the number of charge counters on Riptide Replicator. There yeah, is a nah. decent chance no. this is one of the worst magic cards that has ever been printed. So if I'm understanding this right, <laughs> it's four mana, and then you have to pay X, and then you... So let's say you cast this for six mana. It's going to get two counters, and then your reward is you can pay four to make a two-two. <laughs> is that, am I understanding that? So yes, it's like yes, a ten mana two-two. No, of the type and color that you choose. <laughs> oh, so I cannot damn. think of a type or color that would make me want to put this card <laughs> this, in my this deck. This card is doo doo. <laughs> so they made a, a they made a better version of this more recently in Modern Horizons. Birthing bows. I don't know how to say that word. Bows. It's like a tree. That's right. Uh, three mana artifact. Uh, pay four. Tap. Create a two two color shapeshifter creature token with changeling, which is it's basically a Riptide. Uh, whatever Riptide Replicator for six. Now you're paying three instead of six, and then same activated ability, but it's changing. So if it's multi, it counts as any creature type as well, not just one. I see people still run this card, and it's also doo doo. Like it's the like mm-hmm. you don't want to spend seven mana to make a two two changeling. You don't. It's not good. That's the one from Carl Time that turns everything you control and own into. Mask with uh, Nexus. Anything. Mask with yeah. Nexus. Oh, that, this that's, one. That's, that's, way that, better, that's yeah. a totally different purpose, I think. But yeah, but yeah, you can pay three and tap it to make a shapeshifter change. Like, so it's also yeah, I mean. yeah. Like if you really need this effect, then run the Nexus. But like, so, so, so I play this like... card way more often than I should because when you play <laughs> your tribe with twenty no. cards, you need to add this, and this is better than changeling because no one counts changeling as part of the tribe, right? I, but I just want to point out that even if a card is D, that it's horrendous. You do what you got to do, right? If you need more crocodiles, you Riptide Replicator. I just want a tutor for a and crocodile. actually, it's randomly not bad. Like, if, if you cast it for 10 mana. Oh, God. God. Yeah. You can then yeah. untap and what? drop six sixes into play, right? Richard, like it's was not- like, <laughs> Richard was, like, destroying Kindred Dominance. He's like, if I pay seven mana, I want <laughs> to win the game. game. <laughs> and now, same, like, five That's minutes different. later, he's like, oh, if I pay ten mana, it's not that bad. I can make a four-four four crocodile. Level three it's deck, so this card is an all-star. Okay? <laughs> From, like, seven mana, better win the game than ten mana. Oh, that's a relatively big crocodile once per turn. Wow. I'm just saying, I, D, D is not unplayable. D is you need to have a strong reason, and the reason is Watsy printed only ten cards of my tribe. If like you want to play Otter Tribal, like this is all you got, and so you so cling on to the Riptide Replicator I, like no tomorrow. Okay, I I will respect you more if you play this over Changeling in your Tribal deck. If you drop a Changeling, I'm going to give you a hard time. If you drop this, what if you drop? I can a respect Toski? that. It's horrible. Okay, what Toski if you Riptide Replicator field. and then you drop a Toski and draw the card off the token afterwards? <laughs> Sure. That, that would probably all be replicator respect. good then. Yeah, all these cards are all good if you have a Tosky. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, here's another favorite that people love to play. Uh, Door of Destinies. 
Uh, it's four you mana. You were big on it before. Yeah. When it <laughs> enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter of Door of Destinies. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destinies. And we rated it C across the board here. Uh, but I should have been a D. People love this <laughs> like, card. I'm it? pretty sure it's pretty high up there. Uh, what do you guys think about Door of Destinies? I, I think yeah. I, it goes to D range as well. It's it's real bad. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's like compared to something like Code of Arms, it's just so slow. Like it doesn't do anything right away. You got to have creatures in hand. You got to play it. You got to cast more creatures. It slowly grows. There's so many easier ways, and basically every color I think to to try to finish the game than to do it with Door Destinies. And it's got to keep sitting uh, sitting out. So what often happens is you're gonna like build up a few charge counters, and they're like, oh, your creatures are actually getting big, so I guess I'll kill it now, and you don't get any value out of it. So I think it's like borderline on stone unplayable outside of some sort of like uh, cloudstone curio infinite bounce style combo or something outside of that i think it's just it's horrible yeah i would bring it down to a d actually i can never see myself playing this honestly <laughs> i mean even if you combo a fair you make infinite charge counters on it there's like 10 times better off the payoffs that actually win you the game instead of just making your creatures bigger okay i don't know if it's D, but it is bad. Is it? It is overplayed. Like, like Seth said, if you do it slowly, like one creature a turn, you just can get killed. Everyone's gonna be like, "Wow, that's a big board. Let's kill him." <laughs> right? If you're gonna like burst in all these creatures, you have uh, the best tribal card, Cathar's Crusade. Uh, you have a coat of arms. Like, you have oh, these don't. these cards that immediately do what you want and faster. Um, but yeah, this I used to play this a lot, but it would just get you killed, right? Like, you just play this. You play some things, they get big, and everyone's like, wow, look at that slow board growth. Like, better kill them, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? We're good. If you got tasks, we're going to die, coming. right? So you don't want to give that opportunity, right? You just want to slam down your creator hoof and end the game. Um, so, yeah, I don't think this is this is enough, but I don't think it's, like, horrendous. Like, you can play this, and it's, it's still a decent card. Uh, so I give it a C. I don't think it's D, but... I think, I think it's still playable. Like, I'll run it only if I can't run the better options and then maybe like if i'm desperate for an anthem then i think it's better than like that adaptive automaton but <laughs> that's that's, that's not really high praise to get dunked on <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, it's like, another, another yeah. pump spell that people play uh obelisk of erd six mana artifact convoke when it enters a battlefield choose a creature type creatures you control the chosen type get plus two plus two and you can convoke this out so you can tap creatures uh to add mana uh is this is this playable <laughs> do we play obelisk of erd uh c for phil d's for the rest of us d not for anymore don't play. <laughs> d, i almost d played it play once d. so i considered <laughs> playing it in some go wide deck it seems playable but then again i don't like attacking anyway so i didn't play it in the end it, it needs flash. Like good. you can't convoke yeah, it because then you can't true, attack yeah. with the thing because yeah. <laughs> you convoke. Good it's point. Only, yeah, it's only <laughs> plus two, plus two. Like if you have five creatures, which is pretty. I don't know how many creatures you're imagining you having, but five is a pretty decent amount. There's only ten power. Like that is not enough to even kill one person, right? So I don't know. I don't know why people play this. Just like the incremental, yeah, pump to be. feel good that you have a bunch of four fours that are get wrapped <laughs> the next turn, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's no evasion or anything, so yeah, I think it just doesn't do enough. Yeah, it needs it needs to give some sort of utility. Give it flying. Give them indestructible. Like I don't know. Like is a Chroma's man. will a tribal support card? <laughs> like I would just play that I mean, over this, right? Now, if I was yeah. gonna play this, I would yeah. play a Chroma's will, right? I would. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but I think like we 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 listed like a bunch of tribal anthems that are better than this, right? Yeah, like runs his coat of arms instead. I think. Erd, Erd is expensive. Door of Destinies was like $15, by the way. Let's see how much Code of Arms is. Is it, is it like prohibitively expensive? No, it's the Code same amount. It's $14 yeah. as well. It's the same amount. So instead I mean, of getting Obelisk Door of Destinies, just get Code of Arms. People playing it. Obelisk is like 2 bucks. It's like yeah. fine. Maybe that's part of the reason but that people play it is because it's cheaper. But I think yeah, it's pretty far down the tier list of tribal anthems, I think. Yeah, it's like the dregs. Uh, we'll move back to the land of slow card draw because I'm I'm curious about this one. This card's kind of expensive. Uh, Nine dollars. Descendants path two and a green enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. 
If it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature you control, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, put that card on the bottom of your library. Uh, we have it all at C except myself. Yeah. I have oh, Tomer's changed. No, so me and Tomer are at D. I will not Seth run the are at C. Is I this it's... valid card advantage slash ramp? It's just no. cool <laughs> if it works. I think it's cool in tribes that are really big. We've been talking a lot about go wide tribes and how you're like, oh, these cards aren't that good if you're playing a bunch of big dragons or a bunch of big angels. Descendant's Path is kind of the opposite. If you're playing like a bunch of big Eldrazi or a bunch of big dragons, then even if you whiff most of the time, which you will, because most of your deck's going to be mana, but even if you're hitting one out every two turns, one out every three turns, if you're spinning a eight drop dragon into play, you only got to hit once in the game and it's going to be worth it. So that's the one place that I like. It is in tribes that rather than going wide with small creatures are just playing these big haymaker creatures. Then I think it's like a fine option. I think you need top deck manipulation as well. And green does have like Sylvan Library, Miri's Guile, Sensei's Top, like or Cream of the Crop. Cream of the Crop Worldly is one champion that I think is like really good. With, <laughs> Cream of the Crop with these cards. cards. <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, but like yeah, you need you need some top deck manipulation for it to be decent. I do agree with Seth though that you want to be in like a big power haymaker style deck for it. But even then, I don't know. It's so slow. So so there's a no, lot of cards slow. like this where it's like at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library if it's the creature type, uh, draw or put into play. I think yeah. these cards all suck, right? Like, so it, it, in the best case, you like flip an Eldrazi into play. But if you if you're running Eldrazi in your deck, you probably have like ten creatures, fifteen creatures tops, right? Like your chance of hitting is like fifteen of eighty or something. It's very low, right? And if you actually have a lot of creatures, like forty, a that's still only like fifty percent chance to hit. But then you're just gonna get like one ones or whatever coming in off this, right? So. It's yeah. this is decent because it's an enchantment. Like there's others that are auras and stuff that are like much worse. But Ugh. I would not yeah. count this as card draw. I would rather just pay three mana draw like three plus with any of my tribal card draw. Right then. there's that blue aura that people are excited about. Sometimes I'll mention like, oh, this is so good in my. It's like it's the thing. Call same to thing. the kindred. <laughs> yeah, Holy, I cute. think that's even worse because now yeah. you're attaching it to a creature and just like yep. begging your opponents to kill that one creature and you get two for one. But yeah, like these cards, I skip on them every time. Especially in, <laughs> like, especially in color. Like, so Call of the Kindred is blue. You're in blue. You can draw cards. Right? You don't need this like yeah. desperation or like same with green. Right? You don't need if you're playing Eldrazi. You have like three mana draw tens in your deck. Like you don't need the Descendants uh, Path. Right? But remember, it's putting the thing into play. Yeah. So it's a little different than drawing a card. It's like yeah. a, a mana show advantage. and tell or it's a, a show sneak and tell. attack yeah. or something. Like it's more of that style effect. So you're playing it to get like the ramp more so than the card advantage, I it, think. It's a is combo deck at this for. point, right? Like you load up yeah. with like top deck manipulation and you just try to put some you put a changeling into play and then you try to load up something gigantic on top. And then are you really a tribal deck now, right? Like if you have two Eldrazi, is it Eldrazi tribal, right? So I mean uh, like you're hoping you play that that new like two drop dragon thing from Baldur's Gate that lets you yeah. play dragons off the top of your deck. You like play that on turn yeah. two, play this on turn three, yeah, and yeah. then just like spin a you know whatever eight drop ancient silver dragon into play on turn four, and you're like ah got him or like that's yeah. what you're hoping for. But it's really right. like kind of a combo piece more than anything. I mean, yeah, to be fair, the call mind. to the kindred. It's also you look at the top five, so you don't really need top deck manipulation. You just you're if you're in the right deck, you can do it. I just don't like having an aura that's like please kill my creature two for one me i'll give yeah. you a b i'll give you a b a. even though i don't consider it a tribal deck at this point <laughs> but like i think dragons worms, i'll give it a c so, some of these like green like really big tribes you yeah. can just spin into something that's fun <laughs> and it saves it's you fun. like six mana or something as well in the I mean, process that's worth, right if you can get yeah. the card and six mana that's like actually insane but yeah all right so that wraps up tribal support tier list. I think we actually got through like almost all of the cards in the list. Oh, you can I, find I had an honorable mention. Oh, what's the honorable mention, just, Phil? I would just throw this in there. I mean, if you can say Toski, I'd say <laughs> Mirror March. No. Well, here we are here. It's a bit... Too... Wait, what? If you play a tribal deck, you want creatures of a <laughs> certain tribe, and this six-mana enchantment 
lets you flip a coin whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield and uh, you flip a coin again if you win and you do this until you lose and you create that many copies of the creatures with haste and you exile them at the next end step. Um and this is just an honorable mention, just as Toski should be. What, but what tribe do you put it in? You, uh, any tribe, like slivers, it's great. Like dragons, it just kills people. Assuming you're lucky, obviously, but hey, we're talking <laughs> hypotheticals here. But same with like elemental. Oh, yeah. Oh, elementals, risen reef at this. Oh, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 elementals, and it'll be good. Okay, <laughs> it's a it's a six man enchantment that you could do either amazing things or do absolutely nothing. Why wouldn't you just rather run like kindred charge at that point? It's a six mana sorcery. Choose hey, a creature hey. type for each creature you control. That type you make a token copy, and you're guaranteed like every single creature you have on the battlefield. If you're in tribal deck. You just make sure. a copy of it. They have haste, they attack. It's like literally what this does, except good. No. No. I rated yeah. Mirror March S for so you're telling me there's a chance. And, <laughs> no, and just, just assume you win three, four flips in a row, and it's the greatest card ever. It's, I mean, it's just, when I cast it, never. When I my opponent casts it, always. <laughs> <laughs> this could be really good. What about Kindred? Do we even card. have Kindred Charge on the list? We did. We, skip we did. It? I think we glossed over Kindred Charge. Where where is it? It's on the list, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. B's B for okay. me and Phil and Seth and Richard are C's. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds like right. this. It's I think it gets the job done. I just tried to play it. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, so the full list is in the show notes. Uh if there's any cards we've missed, let us know. And uh yes, Toski is a tribal support card, so feel free to add what favorite cards go <laughs> in all of your tribal decks. So or if you disagree with some of our ratings, let us know. Did we forget something? Like you know, maybe some of these cards that people play quite frequently we're just missing the whole point of, right? So uh if you're a Dwarf Destinies player, uh, let us know what we're missing. Uh yeah, so leave comments, be sure to like and subscribe, and uh we will see you next week. See ya. Bye. Is Rhystic Study a travel support card? It is. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Woo!